Welcome group Mac T here and of course we're having a great time and I'm getting messages and everything else already. Wow. But uh, first of all I want to of course uh, basically wish everybody a great day and of course our new members and again we've been having a pretty good growth for new members and just tons of them. So a few of course have joined in the last week or so and have not seen a uh, Matt T Facebook Live, then of course today is your day to see that. And I want to wish all of you, of course, a great day. And we'll go over a few of the new members. Uh, not, not a bunch of them. Here we had Lawrence and David, Jay, Doreen, Anthony, uh, Stephen, Dana, Jamil, um, uh, Glow, Richard, Bernard, Brittany, Sarah, Daniel, uh, and Sarah again, and Era, Haas, Mark, Pete, and Katie. Of course, are some of our new members that have joined here just in this last week or so. Uh, again, I try to do this every Sunday, so we try to cover a few things. And uh, the next thing, I know I did have this statement on here, and we'll cover that shortly, on, you, you know, how's your GM transmission doing in your Ford, and how's your Ford doing in your GM? So, uh, yeah, it's not always what it seems. But, again, we have a lot of activity on our Facebook group, and, uh, of course, uh, seems to be everybody's got their own little... Uh, uh, gotcha cards for parking that seems to be picking up there a little bit and then of course uh, let's see what else we got uh, Canadians worst drivers I guess you know what there's worst drivers everywhere so I ain't gonna say any one group or or nation or city has the worst drivers but I'm sure it's plus or minus as we all say I mean you've seen me putting up my minor little stuff that I uh, run across on a daily basis and and I usually uh, pick up something, you know, that people do and uh, just find it humanity is uh, what it is. So all I can preach to that is patience, people. Be patient, okay? It doesn't do you any good to get upset. But uh, anyway, uh, we got a few folks going to be installing trailer hitches on their edge. We talked about that. And uh, in answer to that, I was asked if I ever going to do a trailer hitch video. Heck, no, I'm not going to do one unless I decide to put one on my edge. But why would I when I got old Rufus the Ranger with a hitch already on it? I just got to get the old suspension rebuilt so I can start towing. Yeah, now what I tow is not heavy, so the old Ranger can handle the light stuff like a golf cart or something like that. So I'm not too worried about it. I'll just use old Rufus to do the towing and save the transmission on the edges for later use but anyway we got uh santos he's of course got uh a cooling fan issue and of course he answered his own question and his deduction was correct replace the fans and of course we all know what brand do we place our cooling fans with <laughs> yes can't go wrong with motorcraft uh i guess some aftermarkets will work for you but be in, you know, keep in mind, you may have to do it twice because not always have they had good luck with the aftermarket. So uh, you do it once or do it twice. It's up to you what you want to do. Uh, I do recommend OEM for the fans, though. Uh, let's see. Otis, uh, he says he's got a 2002 uh, or 2012 Limited. And he's having an issue with the driver's side AC blowing hot and passenger blowing cold. And we all know that is the actuator that, of course, is acting up. And I'm getting about that far from maybe doing an actuator replacement. Mine work, and, and if I do it, folks, I am breaking my cardinal rule of fixing something that ain't broke. So, uh, you know, I just don't like tearing my car apart. If it's working, then, then why tear it apart? So uh, we'll see what we're doing here. Uh, but basically, uh, you know, if I do it, then, you know, I don't know. I know there's a need to have some video on that and everything else. Uh, I just have to weigh in because I do have to work on old Rufus the Ranger yet. And that, that is a project and a half. 
So uh, we'll see what we're doing here. Time. I got less time than I do money, it seems. But, uh, you know, that's just part of the deal. Uh, let's see. What else do we have going on? We have uh, a lot of different things. And, and folks, I was paid back in uh, spades here. Uh, and you know what? There's no amount of money you guys can throw at me, in all honesty, uh, compared to what I just got here. Okay? Uh, I do a lot of this stuff out of the goodness of my heart. It costs me money out of my pocket. If I didn't enjoy it, I would stop making the videos and I would stop this on Sunday. Okay? You folks make me do this because I want to do it. And you make me uh, feel uh, quite heartwarmed uh, in what you've done. But I did get a letter. Yes, I had a viewer sit down and write me a one-page typewritten single space letter thanking me for everything that I did on the uh, videos to help them work on their car. That, folks, you know, that made my heart just fill up and swell up, you know, with thanks, okay? Uh, the humility of it all and everything else helping folks. And again, that to me was an extreme payment that that I, I couldn't bother to even try to understand on that. Uh, it just makes me feel good. That's all. I'm just at a loss of words on it. I did not expect this, and it's the first letter of such I've ever received on thanks. I've seen some emails and other response, but you know that was the extra effort, I thought. So uh, I do thank the individual that sent that. It, you have no idea the effect that you had on me when you sent that letter, and I got it and read it. So thank you so much for everything that you have done and, uh, you know, in warming my heart on that. So that being said, uh, you, you all did see this sticker, didn't you? Yeah, you saw this sticker. <laughs> Folks, if you haven't went to the Band of One Facebook page, which I'm trying to get him to do a Band of One Facebook group, so I can pin it at the top of the uh page for groups and you folks can listen to his music this guy is beyond talent he has uh, uh enough talent for all of us i think not only does he do pretty good with photographs he's a good father good husband and he also can play music because that is the music that you've all recently been listening to on all of my mac t ford edge videos on youtube Yes, he is the musician, a one-man band, no less, that makes great music. And his name is Kevin Mesner, and I do want you all to flood his Facebook group page. The links are in the YouTube videos. You can click on it and tell him how good of a uh, musician he is because he adds on to the videos, folks. His music is, is, just helps me, and I want to help him by making sure he has the recognition he deserves on that aspect so uh, by all means go to his Facebook group and uh, of course help him out spread his music around he deserves all the help he can get on that uh, let's see oh we got lots of folks that have been joining we've been introducing them with their uh, Lincoln MKX's and also the Ford Edges it's all one and the same as far as that goes, Lincoln, uh, not as many of them, but hey, they all still need the help eventually. And then, of course, we have all sorts of other things going on, folks trying to fix things. Uh, rain guards. Here lately, there's been a lot of rain guards and weather tech guards and, and AVS guards and everybody trying to decide which is the better product. I don't know. All I got is an AVS bug shield on my one edge, and that's about it, so... I don't know. I don't have the, the vent visors for the, for the windows on mine or anything like that. So uh, put in your two cents worth there. Help people pick the right product for the right job. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? Lots of waxing and washing. It's summer, of course, and everybody's washing and waxing. And uh, in our case, we had Steve and his pug. Of course his pug was driving it through the car wash I'm not so sure how that works out but it's always a great picture so so the old pug she was uh, going at it I don't get didn't get her name but she seemed to have a handle on it with both paws on the steering wheel 
So safety first, right? Good job, pugs. Anyway, by the way, my daughter loves that pug, yo. So if you ever need a new home for it, I guess she'd be the one to take it. But anyway, uh, we got some brake boosters failing, and of course that was uh, mentioned. And John, I, you know, I said, uh, let's see, you may be under warranty for that. I'm pretty sure you are, so just go to Ford and tell them, hey, brake boosters broke, replace it. Should be a zero dollar charge for you because it is a, cus a Ford customer service program, a CSP, which means it's just shy of a recall, so they'll fix it for nothing. So you want to make sure you do get that taken care of. And then, of course, we have, uh, let's see, uh, Ica J. Uh, basically, uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm getting messages, yes. Anyway, Ica J, uh, uh, yeah, replace the batteries. Been a lot of battery things going on. I do not know if uh, Motorcraft has jumped onto the bandwagon yet as far as the AGM battery, Motorcraft battery. Uh, so if they do, by all means, post it out there if you know this information. I just haven't bothered to research it. But again, if, you know, my suggestion has always been, if you, you know, don't go cheap, get that AGM in there and have the power that you need. Those things are excellent batteries and they're far stronger and better cold cranking amps overall. For the long haul so you you know the, supposedly they got a longer life too so if ford backs those agms like they do their lead acid you probably won't have to buy another battery for your edge uh so that's probably a bonus photographs folks photos for the banner make sure you step back turn your camera sideways and get that whole picture with landscape around your edge that way i can use it on the banner it's good to have close-ups if we got to see nice detail, but again, if we want a banner picture, we got to step back. Yes, we got to give a give a little bit of room for there. Let's see, what is this? The walled, the garage, too far apart? <laughs> yeah, comments from the peanut gallery going on here. Anyway, uh, I did get that stick you guys out. I put it on my Ford Edge, and I'll put the other one on Lou later as far as the band of one. Uh, let's see what else we got. I posted pictures of that nice green emblem on top of it. Uh, somebody asked to see Jordan Overby ask about uh, the foreskin on the laptop. And folks, that is one thing I have never sat down to work on. Uh, so uh, I'm really trying to figure that out as far as uh, using it. I just never did it. Everything I find I need, I use right through my phone. I set the you know clear codes check codes and everything else and I just never had the need to pull up the foreskin to make any adjustments but uh, basically uh, let's see we had some questions here and I can't read it because it's so small on the phone how can I know what color coolant I have on my edge uh, I can't tell what color it is well Alex if you can't tell the color let's go by the year okay uh, the first years of the Edge, I think up through somewhere around mid-2008 or so, uh, they had uh, the, I want to say the, the, what is it, the orangish color, whatever, yellowish color uh, fluid. Uh, I don't have the scale here. We do have it in our file section, and uh, maybe Mano will post it up so you all know, but it's yellow, orange, just whatever. The first gen uh, had that. Then they went to the, the specialty dark green. And then after the specialty dark green, they went to, what was it, the gold or something, whatever it was, uh, later on. And that was, you know, later on in the uh, model years uh, that they switched partway through the 1.5 refresh, I think. And uh, then it's been that way ever since. So uh, look up that scale that we have in the file section. It'll tell you exactly what you need to put in there. But if you can't tell what color it is, you need to flush it out with a neutralizer and distilled water. And uh, I would put the green. You can go buy Peak or Xerox, Xerox rather, uh, uh, Long Life uh, Antifreeze, green in color. It's like a fluorescent green in a way. And uh, add that, but make sure you flush that old stuff out, okay? Don't let it touch and mix. Get it all so it's running clear distilled water. Once you get to that point with the neutralizer through it too, 
then go ahead flush that out and then throw that new stuff in there do not drive around a long time with just distilled water in it that water pump begs for new lubrication with coolant so just don't do that let's see what else we got Oh, somebody's already posted it up for you there so you can get the answer on the Facebook group here and uh, of course thank you Stephen for doing that and of course uh, answer that question let's see what else do we have here uh, JP he's uh, trying to do an adjustment to his DRLs to adjust it to the high beams uh, I've never seen that uh, I've seen them adjust them to DRLs for the, the the side marker lights and stuff like that but I haven't seen them be able to adjust the high beams to be the beam of choice okay so uh, not sure where you can go with that but uh, it's not it's worth looking at on the foreskin and maybe even ask foreskin group on foreskin.com and see if they can help you out in determining if they can do it maybe they can write a program to actually do this function let's see what else do we have uh, tool reviews and everything else you, you folks if you haven't watched what I have as far as a toolbox besides stuffed animals that were secretly planted by CB in my toolbox uh, you know I got basic tools folks nothing special okay uh, and I get the job done you don't have to break the bank to buy the tools if you got the money and want to have really really good tools then by all means buy some really good tools but uh, so far everything that I do the, the less expensive ones work so I just stick with what I know uh, so I'm not gonna make this as a tool review but I will tell you that so far after about two years of use that Astro Nano air gun that I did show y'all that thing is well worth a hundred bucks if you got access to air uh, even if it's a small air compressor it's enough to pull the lug nuts off folks uh, so it is definitely worthwhile but an electric one would probably do you just as well like a Milwaukee or something like that that won't break the bank so uh, think about that uh, let's see also before I forget folks I have created an event yes so click over on the left hand side of the Facebook group and you will see the Mac T Ford Edge Lincoln MKX Central US group meeting that is scheduled for the what was it the 16th of September which is a Saturday uh, we're gonna try to meet sometime about 12 noon at a location west of Chicago area uh, I gotta look at the cities and stuff and uh, see if we got enough group members uh, I'm trying to make it so it's within two hours for everybody it's about a two hour and 20 minute drive for me to where I'm thinking I want to go uh, but it'll be off of Interstate 88 or something like that. Not sure, but we want to pick something, some place to get together as a group out in the parking lot at a restaurant, out in the back someplace, and then of course get together and then go ahead and have some lunch and some camaraderie, show each, each other's cars off, give tips, show what we've done to fix things, check engines, whatever, run scanners, I'll bring my stuff with me. Uh, just basically get together as a group to talk about what we want to do and uh, maybe kick off some meetings this way uh, to try to do it and move it around occasionally so I can meet other people in other areas but that is truly what I want to do is just meet with folks okay and uh, just share our like and dislike yeah there's pros and cons of everything but uh, you know we can work through it and of course make everything good so click on there it'll help me decide if I either got to cancel the event or move on with it I'd like to at least get four or five people to show up but uh, you know we'll see where we go with it but that is predominantly what I'm trying to do with that group event thing and uh, basically get everybody out there together uh, let's see what else do we have going on we have something else Orish, Orisha uh, she cleaned the fabric on her seats and she pulled out chocolate milk. <laughs> Orisha, I'm not sure if I'd be showing everybody how dirty your seats were. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> that was nasty. Oh boy, that's some nasty, nasty stuff there, isn't it? Probably needed a cleaning, you know. After all, your seats on a seat, I'm sure it's getting dirty but uh, make sure that y'all do take care of your edges clean them inside and out 
and uh, I have a good day doing that. I don't know that we have a whole lot of other stuff there. I don't want to talk on this too long, but I am going to tell you folks that I do have something else that I have been doing in, and I've run across. And of course, uh, we all buy aftermarket parts, right? Now, here's a prime example of why you have to pay attention to your aftermarket parts. This here. Yes, I bought this and I know on the Facebook group it's backwards, but I'll post it on YT. This is the Motorcraft belt for the power steering pump. Okay? That's it, right there. This is for the power steering. Okay? This is the Deco belt. And it's got the part number right there. You see the part number? See it? Yep, right there's the part number. This is the Deco brand. Now, we got, these are stretchy belts. Got to stretch them on there. It can be rather tough. They're rather tight. Now, I'm going to show you all something about fitment. Look at this. See this. Look at this. I can't really do this too much. Do you see a difference? You see that difference? Yes. The Motorcraft one is longer. The Deco is shorter. And I'm not talking a teeny bit. I'm talking a lot. I mean, look at this, folks. Look at that. That is how much it's shorter. Yes, that is how much it's shorter. And I got them all even here, but look at that. They're that short, okay? A finger's difference in the length. So when you buy products that you want to put on your car, do you put the really short one on, or do you put the Motocraft one that's built for the part? Not all belts are the same, okay? So not all parts are the same. And that's my whole point. What do you think? Motocraft fan for your coolant, for your fans? Or do you go with a TYC or a Dorman? Is it made the same? Obviously not, right? So, you know, am I going to try this belt? Yeah, I'm going to try it. Didn't pay much for it, so I'll try it. See if I break it trying to get it on. But again, fitment, okay? So be very, very careful. Had I taken and went to go put this on my edge and not have the Motocraft handy, what if I can't get it on? I've already cut it off. Yeah, now where are you at? So, always check fitment, folks. Make sure it's the right belt. In this case, I'm going to tell you the day code just does not cut it, I think. I'm thinking it's going to be tough to install this one. And I'm, unless it really stretches good, I don't know. So... Uh, we'll find out because I'm going to put it on my loo. We're going to see if it fails. And if it fails, I'll have the motor craft in my car so, <laughs> and the tools to fix it. But uh, we'll go ahead and see how that works out. So fitment, folks. Fitment is where it's at. Now, all right, we're going to jump into this whole thing. Now, the 6F50 in the, in, in the transmission that was in the first gen edges, all the way up through uh, till they started putting in the uh, uh, two liter turbo uh, was primarily the 6F50 transmission. Okay, the two liters were primarily getting the 6F35, which is the same one as the Ford Escape. Then, of course, they added up uh, the 2.7 then and they put in the 6F55. Now, so we got essentially two transmissions, 6F50, or three transmissions, 6F50 was, a, was the granddaddy of them all, slush box as it is, and then we got the 6F35, which is a Ford Escape transmission put in the 2 liter edge for that fitment, and then we went to the uh, 6F55 for the uh, Sport versions with the 2.7 liter. So there's three transmissions right now involved. Now let's go back to where we came up with the 6F50. Uh, the 6F50 
was a joint venture, 50-50 paid for, billion dollars or so venture between Ford and General Motors. Okay, so when you complain about your 6F50 transmission and you're going to go buy a Chevy that is roughly the same size as the Ford, then you are buying a safe transmission. <laughs> so if you don't like the transmission in your Ford and then you buy a Chevy uh, Equinox or something like that, you're getting the same transmission, folks. It's the same thing, yes, because it was a joint venture. The 6F and the 6T50, I think is what Chevy called them or something like that. They're all the same package. They're there, okay? So now we've had these 6F50 for what now, uh, 17. We've had the 6F50 running uh, right up until uh, now, uh, 10 years. That six speed transmission has been running over 10 years. Uh, so about 2000, I think I read 2013 or so, uh, they started doing another joint venture. Now Ford came out with, uh, there's two transmissions that Ford and GM jumped on together. Now this, the, uh, first transmission that was jointly made was the, uh, Hydromatic, which was, uh, the nine uh, 9T50, 9 speed. Now, GM took the lead on the 9 speed transmission. Okay? So, that is the transmission that's going to end up in the edge. I don't know if it's going to be in 2018, but I have a feeling it's going to be the refresh uh, for 2021 when the Gen 2.5 comes out. Uh, that's only two years away, by the way. So, uh, anyway, the 9T50, which will probably be called the 9F50 for Ford. I'm just guessing, but I'm, I, there's, there's not a lot of information on this, but I've read everything on the GM. GM's taking the lead on the, on the 9 speed. They've been putting it in the Malibus. They're putting it in the Equinox. They've been jumping. You know, here's the deal. When they made the 9T50, since they took the lead on that, now GM's got first dibs for at least a year to put it in their cars. And then Ford gets dibs after that. Now we go back to the 10, uh, 10 uh, I forget what it was, uh, the 10 T50, T50 or something, or 10 T80 or something like that. Uh, they went to that transmission. I, I got to look it up again. Uh, what did they go to? I forgot. They jump, they jump around on me here on these transmissions so I gotta read it but uh, let's see I know I got it here well anyway they went to the uh, 10 speed transmission which was the 10R80 yes 10R80 which is which is again uh, going to be the project the 10 speed was Ford lead with GM sub, you know, submitting money for that. It's a 50-50 deal, but each one took the lead on one or the other. Ford took the lead on the 10-speed. Okay, So now Ford's got that and they put it in what car? Well, that's a truck transmission. So they put it in the Raptor. Okay, So it's been in the Raptor. That's the 10-speed transmission they tossed in the Raptor. Now now, and in the F-150 too, yes, the F-150 is getting it. Uh, but it started out with the Raptor. And then, now they got this, and guess what? They're putting it in the ZL1 Camaro, I think it is, that they're putting it in. Under Chevy and GM. So the ZL1 is getting the same transmission as the Raptor and the F-150 are. So, uh, you know. It's, it's a joint venture. We're talking, I, they said that uh, Ford put in $1.3 billion along with GM into this project. Okay, so when, why do they do this? Very simple. They keep their transmissions in-house. Okay, yes, and the Mustang got the 10-speed also. Uh, try not to go on and on. I could name all of them, but I don't want to go that deep into it. 
but there's very limited models that are getting this 10 speed right now and then GM's going to be tossing more of them in too into the Silverados and all this other stuff and keep in mind this is not this is the straight linear one that goes from the engine back okay for real or drive the other one I talked about is the transaxle one but uh, let's go into something more in depth okay uh, the transmission in the development phase for the uh, front wheel drive version uh, if you look at it you will hardly tell a difference uh, everything that I've seen in photographs and, and all this other stuff and the reading and research I did with uh, the GM Ford mix for the uh, 9F50 uh, transmission or as they call 9T50 uh, it the whole goal was to take the case and not disturb the case they wanted to build the same transmission which they did without much modification to the actual housing of the transmission now what they did do is they went through the whole transmission and they got rid of a lot of stuff okay what did they do well they developed that hydromatic nine-speed transmission okay and of course they changed the gear ratio the overall gear ratio uh, was changed okay up to a 7.6 to 1 overall ratio which is higher okay, okay than the original 6F50 so here's what that does for you will this make the uh, Ford Edge a better off-road vehicle okay that's another question because the more gears we have lower torque which would mean it should technically allow for lower gear ratios with multiple selections to make those wheels spin a little slower and to give you better traction all-wheel drive that's the hope that I'm thinking that there's in there too so uh, that in the ultimate gear towing you will be able to select down gears to change your final gear ratio when you tow imagine being able to drop down incrementally to get the right gear for towing yes and then of course that's the other issue there now the gears and everything are what they call an on-axis design in other words the transmission and the gears are all matched to the crank all the way directly through whereas before it might be like this they have been realigned to be straight okay they did that for horsepower gain, shifting gain, and other things like that. So it is an on-axis design, as they say, uh, to felic, you know, facilitate uh, things. They also have done away with the uh, torque converter, as we commonly call our fluid coupling, as they say. Uh, the torque converter has been pancaked, you know, as thinner, okay, because they needed the room for more gears, so they made it smaller but they also have made the torque converter a launch only function yes in other words it is used to accelerate from a dead stop after that they've changed the clutch packs and everything else and the way they're done they've added springs into it and electronic solenoids to do some of the tr the work and they've essentially reduced the the fluid coupling uh, requirement to change the gears in the transmission now you can read up on this and it gets really complicated but just rest assured is what I'm thinking that we're gonna find out for this new generation is that we're getting rid of the slush box folks will we see a better faster more sure shift in this nine uh, speed transmission will this thing run better will we have firmer shifts will it create a great driving experience with this new transmission for this nine speed and I'm betting it will because they have designed it so that when the clutch plates hit they are direct drive they are shifted once that transmission gets moving and gets rid of that uh, torque converter need everything is direct drive when it shifts okay if you think about higher end European transmissions in the in the in the way they shift and there's they're very sturdy and stable when they do it this is what they're aiming for okay so uh, you're gonna get better shifts because every one of them is is controlled by a direct contact direct drive lockup feature 
and they've what they've done to allow for different things for accelerating up hills and stuff is they've allowed for a slight amount of slippage of about 40 to 50 psi or rpm rather to allow that transmission to make sure it stays st solid in the gear and doesn't you know slush out on you and downshift and all this other stuff when it really doesn't need to okay so you keep a more even power to the through the engine now we could have problems as with all new transmissions there could be some weaknesses but uh, oil management transmission okay as far as fluids on these new transmissions you're not going to be using Mercon Dextron uh, LV fluid you will be using the new ULV fluid that means you will have to buy Mercon ULV which is of course a very low viscosity fluid but again they're taking away the use of the fluid altogether for uh, a lot of the functions and they're just trying to make things flow better to allow for the quicker shifts so long term I'm thinking we may have to change that fluid more often if they start getting the viscosities down there that low but that of course will be uh, something you have to work for uh, but basically uh, as far as the clutch packs and everything else uh, as they say that uh, the transmission uh, is going to basically freewheel itself when you when you're coasting it allows a one-way freewheel and then it, then when you give it power it locks in uh, so there's a lot of different things that they put into that uh, shift controls uh, basically variable speed when coasting or braking downhill and it takes advantage of engine braking to help prevent unwanted acceleration and help reduce the need for brake during descent so the transmission will also be a direct connect and will of course slow the edge down going downhill okay so you're gonna have essentially engine braking while you're doing that and then of course the uh, the TCM the TCM is a 32-bit transmission control module that's gonna be on there and it commands all the shifts and events and uh, of course makes all your uh, shift ratios go so we can have to watch that TCM uh, basically there and of course uh, let's see and the TCM will not be put inside the transmission folks bonus it's gonna be outside of the transmission so uh, they did that so they could reduce the overall packaging size of the transmission, which is a bonus. That means you can actually fix the TCM without removing the transmission. So there is some good stuff going on with these transmissions that, uh, of course, are forthcoming. Uh, but again, I've been researching it, and GM is taking the lead with the 9-speed. You, if, you if you want it now, you got to buy a, four, you know, a Malibu or... Or, or an Equinox or something like that because they designed the 9-speed so therefore they got first dibs. Now the 10-speed the, the, the of course first dibs for Ford and then GM takes it. So uh, Ford Edge refresh. Folks, you know I've read a lot. A lot of people put speculation out there and just think about it. They went through the platform 2007 through 2010. Okay that was the first initial platform next one is 2011 through 14 okay that was the 1.5 refresh then we have the 2015 through what what are we going to be going to I'm going to say we're going to be going through at least 2020 uh, you know which uh, is about two years away uh, for the introduction of the 2021 2.5 refresh they're not going to change the platform folks they will do modifications to make sure that the new transmissions fit. They'll do body fascia, interior design changes, and all this other stuff. The major stuff at 2021. In the meantime, uh, you know, they're going to use the same platform. So they're just going to make their major adjustments at 2021. Keep in mind, they're putting out the Ford Ranger, the Ford Bronco, and the new Expedition and everything else. So they got a lot on their plate. Uh, through model years they're going through. Now the Ford Fusion of course is their their primary platform that they experiment with so if you want to get all the new tech and all the new stuff they're doing you gotta buy a Ford Fusion current year to get all the new stuff. I'm not so sure that's worth it 
but you can do that. But that is how the transmission is going. So it's a joint venture. Now, why do we do joint ventures? Uh, well, save money, okay? First of all, here's, here's my theory on it, and I think it's probably pretty close. We all look at the badge on the front, the badge on the back, the side. It's a Ford. We love Ford. We look at the Chevy. Okay, GM. We love GM. You know, they got both sides of the house. Okay, what's the difference? Oh, we got our Ford, our Coyote motors. We got the Ecotec, EcoBoost. We got the, the Duratex. Ford, you know, Chevy then has all their L, LS engines and everything else they're doing. They each have their own power plant. But how many of you really care what transmission's in it? Really. Do you look down into the engine and say, oh, no, that's a, that's a Chevy transmission. No, nobody cares. So, therefore, the dealers, or not dealers, the, the brand manufacturers, Ford and GM, said, hey, nobody cares what transmission's in there. They care that they work. But how about we just joint venture this because it's cheaper, and then we can make our money back on this, and we can have transmissions. So... You can literally go order a GM part to put in your Ford transmission for the most cases, and they'll work, okay? So, is your Ford truly a Ford, or is it a GM? You never know. Uh, in compatibilities, I wouldn't go out and throw an Equinox transmission into my Ford Edge. You know, I wouldn't do it. You know, there's differences, folks. But the whole point is, is when it comes to gears and everything else, they're probably pretty much the same. So you end up with a GM part in your Ford, and you end up with a Ford part in your GM. But it all comes down to the money that they save when they take and jointly design these transmissions. Because after all, the consumer don't care. Okay? You, how many of you actually asked when you went to bought the car, oh, this is a Ford transmission? Right, it's a GM transmission, but they sell it as a Ford. Because they named it as a Ford. That's all there is to it. Okay? So... Uh, you know, as far as your knowledge and ability to understand the transmissions, that's where it's at. And you've been driving all these years with a GM partnered transmission in your Ford Edge since 2007. Okay. So, you know, I always laugh a little bit when people say, oh, I hate the transmission. I'm going to go buy a Chevy. <laughs> now you know, folks. Are you truly getting a Chevy or are you getting a Ford? So that's, that's our little, little tidbit for the day to understand what we're doing with our uh, transmissions and everything. And uh, hopefully that uh, you all understand what's going on with that. I'm going to see what kind of uh, questions we have here. But uh, let's see. Yeah, basically uh, the cost shares. That's all it is, folks. It's a cost share. And, you know, if you could build something, wouldn't it be better to build it with a couple neighbors to chip in? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? When you do things as a joint venture, it costs less. You know, because otherwise one company would have to spend tons of money to build a transmission and the other one would have to spend tons. If there's a design flaw, they both put money in it to fix the design flaw and it costs less. Half as much, literally. So, uh, you know, that's it. And the other thing is, is uh, I don't know if you all know this, a little bit of car news, but uh, let's see, Fiat of America or whatever, uh, Dodge and all this stuff, they are trying to sell off the Chrysler Corporation out of Fiat. Why? Because they cannot make a transmission to save their life. Uh, apparently there are some major problems with their transmissions and now it's coming down to a point as the news I was reading during research on this is that they are trying to sell it off. Okay. Uh, the thing is, nobody wants to buy it. The big three don't want, or big two don't want to get involved in it because all they're doing is buying a liability for transmission failures because they totally bungled the job. Uh, we'll see what that comes out to. I don't know how Dodge and Fiat are going to end up uh, working these things out, uh, Jeep and all that. There, there's a lot of history there, so we're going to see what happens with those folks. But it does sound like there's a... Uh, uh, something going to be uh, happening with uh, Fiat. Yes, I forget what they call it. Fiat Corporation of America or some FCA. I forget what they call them. But anyway, sounds like they are in a quagmire that they don't know how to get out of. But uh, overall, you, you all did see that. Uh, I do have a lot of different things that I'm uh, doing for projects. And uh, I do have some other videos I want to make. Like I said... 
I I don't have much. I didn't put out a video this weekend because I really don't have anything to fix on my edges, folks. Um, everything works. It's hard to say that, but at 202,000 miles, my edge needs no work. You know, at this time, uh, regular maintenance is done and she's running strong. So uh, my wife really doesn't have any general maintenance due for another. 5,000 miles, then I'll start doing some shocks and struts and stuff like that on it, belts and all this stuff. But uh, other than that, it's just, just basic maintenance, folks. Uh, yes, yeah, Steven, I know you want me to do a trailer hitch video. I'll take a picture of my Rufus Ranger trailer hitch so that you see how that was installed. <laughs> I'm just, just not going to do it. Yeah, that's all there is to it. Uh, you know, maybe if someday I'll come across an old used donor edge, maybe I can rip it apart for y'all, but, uh, you know, not going to do it. Uh, anyway, uh, not much else going on. I hope y'all enjoyed, of course, any of the videos I have made here in the past weeks. I will tell you that the Mac T Fort Edge YouTube channel by October, based on what I'm seeing, I'll let y'all know when it happens. The Mac T Fort Edge YouTube channel should reach one million views okay uh sometime in october based on what the views are right now uh so if you guys want to hurry it up start watching more videos and then we can get to maybe september uh but uh by all means watch that and of course enjoy the videos as i make them and of course whatever you do i do want you all to, of course uh join up here on this facebook page for those of you watching this on the interweb and of course, uh, Mac T Ford Edge on Facebook. That's where you can get a hold of me all the time. And remember, also hit the like and subscribe button for this Mac T Ford Edge YouTube channel. And that little blue button that says PayPal, you can donate if you want to help me pay for the equipment and then garage fees and everything I do on these videos. And maybe if I start tearing my car apart, pay for that too. But you know, I don't want to tear it apart if it's still working. But anyway, that's all of your own goodwill that you want to do that. I'm not telling anybody to have to because I enjoy you all. And with that being said, my fee hit the floor today, and I am having a great day. And I want all of you to have a great day too. So follow on. You'll hear Mercy Grow put out a few one-liners along with, yes, Kevin Mesner's Band of One music that you'll see at the end of this video. I hope you all have a great Sunday, and I'll see you all next week. Thank you for watching Mac T's videos. Remember to like and subscribe. This is a Mercy Go production. Hey you, yeah you, watch this video up here, watch this video, or this one right down here, watch that one, either one, you'll have a good time, and then of course watch this one also, make sure you have some uh, excellent uh, time on your hands to learn all sorts of things about the Ford Edge.